Hi, my name is Manuel Murbach, and uh, thanks for tuning in. It's my pleasure to walk you through some results of one of our uh, latest MRI safety studies. Our study is heavily based on the virtual population, which is jointly developed by the ETS Foundation, so ourselves, in collaboration with ETH Zurich and FDA. Uh, it is including the, the famous anatomical models Duke and Ella, but it contains altogether more than 12 computable high-resolution whole-body uh, models uh, that are available for biophysical and biomedical modeling. Um, they have more than 120 anatomical features each. Also, there's a large uh, tissue property database available online. Um, some background uh, for the study, RF safety um, for the MRI patient population at 3Tesla. Um, we have patients with uh, very differing anatomies that profit from MR diagnostics. And what you see below is from a, from a baby up to an adult obese model or patient. Then at 3Tesla, uh, we have a RF shimming or a two-port RF shimming implemented on most of the scanners. And Additionally, some patient groups may have a limited thermoregulation ability. So the question is how to ensure RF safety for all patients, especially for local hotspots. The problem with these local hotspots is that they cannot be measured directly because we cannot stick a, a probe of any kind into the patient or into volunteers. So we heavily rely on uh, simulations and numerical um, estimations. And I give you here a brief example on how this looks like in a numerical word. So this is with the anatomical model Lewis in a three Tesla birdcage coil. What you see now is the B1 field. It's a linear polarized field. And uh, this is the one that is actually responsible for spin deflection, so for imaging. However, if we have a, a varying B field that uh, induces eddy currents, these are not intended or wanted, but uh, they're unavoidable, so we have to deal with them. They're uh, circular and they increase with a radial distance from the center. Where we have a high um, concentration of these currents, we also have also a high local um, deposition of RF energy. That's what you can see here in the SAR distribution slides. And we have a hotspot here in Louis uh, uh, near the, the neck region. And subsequently, at last, we can do a thermal simulation with the SAR distribution as an input, where you see that uh, on the, uh, with, the, with time in uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes, uh, we heat up uh, the tissues, at, uh, especially at these hotspots. The factors that influence RF and thermal exposures um, or of course the geometry of the anatomical model of the patient, then also the patient imaging landmark, if it's head or heart or leg imaging, and the patient posture, the B1 incidence field, so the exposure level, but also the, the RF shimming excitation configuration, um, and the dielectric properties of the tissues. The RF-induced temperature increase is additionally depending on the thermoregulatory abilities of the patient. So that's especially the, the local blood perfusion increase that, uh, that we have locally when the body tries to get rid of the excess heat that is building up on the hotspot. Um, as well as uh, tissue perfusion, uh, thermal properties of the tissues uh, are important for the thermal simulation. So our paper investigates six anatomical models in 10 different imaging landmarks and is considering the entire RF excitation space, uh, three Tesla, with a special focus on uh, normal and impaired thermoregulation. The overall objectives of our, our studies are primarily to determine the RF and thermal constraints of three Tesla RF shimmed MR systems and to derive recommendations for safe power levels and scan durations. This is done uh, with evaluations, in, including um, assessing the local RF power des deposition as a function of different anatomical models, as well as uh, for all possible RF excitations, so RF shimmed excitations at the uh, three Tesla two port body coils. Um, then also to assess the local peak tissue temperatures as a function of the thermoregulatory thermo state of the patient 
and this is assuming that the global RF power deposition is sufficiently limited by the whole body absorption limit. Uh, secondary, we also evaluate RF shimming performance and the effect of different body coil geometries. The six models that we used, uh, there are four depicted here from the virtual population. They go from Roberta, little girl, to, to Fed, uh, an adult obese model. Um, we defined 10 different imaging landmarks from head to down to the feet, to the ankle. And for each landmark, we defined also typical regions of interest um, which are used for the, the, the RF shimming, shimming optimization. The exposure limitation is done using SAR, so uh, we have just a specific absorption rate. Um, uh, typically is used uh, whole body SAR, head SAR, partial body SAR, and the standard uses the 10 gram averaged peak spatial SAR uh, for local, uh, as a measure for the local SAR. And the normalization is always done according to the maximum allowance we have in a product standard IC60601-2-33, which is a whole body SAR of less than 4, head SAR less than 3.2, and partial body SAR less than 10 watts per kilogram. The partial body SAR is depending on the coil and, and landmark. The peak space SAR 10 gram is actually not limited for body coils in the standard. The exposure configuration included uh, two separate broadband I and Q simulations at 128 MHz. Um, so the fields were combined in post-processing to evaluate the effects of RF shimming. Um, these uh, uh, two linear excitations were optimized for uh, CP, so circular polarization, as a reference. Then for the worst case, local SAR um, for safety consideration but also for best RF shimming performance in terms of the, the highest uniformity um, of the B1 field and also the highest possible average B1 field in the region of interest. The optimization was performed with a param parametrized matrix for uh, SAR and B1+, plus, the so-called Q matrix. The two-port IQ excitation space is illustrated on this slide. So uh, in A, you see the I and the Q source um, on the bird cage, which are resulting in uh, uh, one linear polarization each. So you see in, uh, in, in C, you see the Q source results in a, in a vertical polarization of the B1 field and the I source in a, in a horizontal polarization. If we go now in uh, sub-image number B, um, if we have the same amplitude of I and Q with a 90 degree phase shift, then we end up with the circular, circular polarization. And if we change the relative amplitude or and change the relative phase, um, we result in, in a elliptical or linear polarizations with different polarization angles. This already brings me to some uh, results. Um, so what you see here is uh, the SAR values for the different imaging landmarks for all six models. In terms of whole body SAR on the lower part of the graph, um, we never exceed the 4 watts per kilogram limit. Uh, towards the head, it's the head average SAR that is limiting the exposure. Towards knee and feet, it's the partial body SAR that is limiting exposure. And then for the local SAR values um, for circular polarization at 3 Tesla, and also one and a half Tesla, we have, we have values um, on the order of 50 to 80 watts per kilogram local SAR. If we do RF shimming, so that's a gray shaded area, uh, we may lower or also increase the local SAR depending on position and model. And if we go to the absolute worst case <coughs> combination of the two uh, linear polarizations, uh, then we have values up to more than 100 watts per kilogram. The F9 case here is actually a bit not realistic because that would require very high field levels. Um, <clears throat> but I identified here four realistic worst case SAR scenarios that include Louis, Ella, and FATS in different imaging positions. <clears throat> so now let's have a look at the whole excitation space for all models and uh, landmarks to see what kind of uh, excitations lead to, to what kind of optimization or to what kind of result. 
Um, circular polarization is again here in the center with a relative amplitude of 1 and a relative phase of 90 degrees. The, the red symbols are for, for the worst SAR excitations um, and the, the identified worst cases are actually indicated uh, as, as uh, L3 to, to F8 for Lewis, Ella, FETs in, in different imaging positions. What we can see here is that the worst SAR scenarios, they're all around 0 to 30 degrees or 180 to 210 degrees. So that's the, the red line, uh, the indicated red line. So that means they're all in an almost linear polarization. If we zoom in a bit into this graph, then we can see that uh, most of the configuration that lead to good RF shimming um, are rather close to circular polarization with a, a high horizontal B1 component, but they can, however, have quite some offset. Um, I indicated here a, a typical or a best RF shimming region that contains all of the, the highest average B1 plus values, as well as more than 80% of the best uniformity shimming values. However, um, even though they're Quite distinct from the worst cases, there are some cases that are indicated here with a red circle where RF shimming or best RF shimming actually can come quite close to, to the worst case SAR scenarios. So that's about uh, for the uh, SAR results. If we go now to the temperature uh, results, we need to include a thermoregulation model as, as this local thermoregulation is the most important parameter for uh, exposures in MRI, where we have local SAR values of more than 20 watts per kilogram. We included a, a normal thermoregulation model, so that is a fully functional model, uh, has a 16-fold increase in all tissues and in skin even up to 32-fold increase. So the higher the local temperature, also the higher the local blood perfusion in this area. Then we included an impaired thermoregulation. I'm going to talk about this on the next slide, which has a 70% reduced blood flow increase and a dysfunctional thermoregulation, which is only the basal perfusion without any, um, uh, without any perfusion increase with temperature. The impaired thermoregulation is necessary for a conservative estimation for the local tem temperature. Uh, for specific patient groups that have limited physiological responses. These include diabetics, advanced age patients, smokers, uh, and renal failure patients. So we did here a literature review and concluded that we, if we have a 70% reduction of a normal response, we uh, cover all literature values as well as the average of them with two standard deviations. So here is SAR and temperature for the entire IQ space for uh, one of the worst cases, FATS, in a groin imaging landmark. You see on, on the left that the, the actual location of the SAR and temperature hotspots are all in the upper thighs. If we go to a circular polarization, um, we have a SAR value of about 50, or it's 53.8 watts per kilogram, which corresponds to a temperature uh, increase locally up to 41.3 degrees centigrade. If we apply in some RF shimming and go to the worst case configuration, um, then you see that we go up to this 106.3 watts per kilogram local SAR, which corresponds to a, a temperature, local temperature of up to 42.5 degree centigrade. So let's have a look at the correlation um, of peak spatial SAR and peak temperature. Um, to see whether we can do some good prediction from SAR on temperature. So the graph you see on the right originates from more than 800 individual thermal simulations from these four worst case scenarios um, with all possible RF excitations. The graph shows the peak temperature as a function of, of peak spatial SAR for the three thermoregulation regimes. In a dysfunctional thermoregulation, which are here in black, we get a peak temperature of about 64.5 degrees. So you see, if we would not have this, this local perfusion increase, we would reach very high temperatures in, in MRI. If we have the impaired thermoregulation, so that's all the, the blue marks, 
we have a maximum temperature of about 45.6 degrees C and in normal thermoregulation um, the maximum temperature that's in green the maximum temperature is 42.5 degrees for the theoretical approximations the dysfunctional thermoregulation is all linear so that's here you see the the black line as a approximation is a is a, is a straight line and in normal and impaired thermoregulation we have a, a root function relation so that's here indicated also in blue and green and the, the prediction is quite good um, the coefficient of determination remains above 0.8 um, for all the three thermoregulation regimes some uh, visualizations of these worst cases so it's the end um, so in uh, fats in abdomen imaging position we have the hot spots in the arm so it's about 90 watts per kilogram locals are which corresponds to 41.7 degrees centigrade um, fats in groin imaging is what we were looking at before and there's also quite a, a distinct hotspot in in Louis in upper stomach imaging where 93.9 watts per kilogram result in 41.6 degrees centigrade uh, local peak temperature so in conclusion, um, RF shimming can improve image quality. Um, I didn't talk about that uh, a lot here, but of course uh, this is the reason why we do it. We have a B1 plus uniformity that can be increased by up to plus 80% and the average B1 plus magnitude by up to plus 50%. However, RF shimming alters RF absorption patterns. It can increase or decrease local SAR. Um, the maximum values uh, are found in, in fats and groin imaging with 106 watts per kilogram. Um, and the best RF shimming may actually be quite close to a worst case in some landmarks. Thermoregulation is the key parameter for uh, temperature increase. And therefore we included a normal impaired and dysfunctional thermoregulation regime. And full exploitation of the first level controlled operating mode has the potential to cause tissue damage since uh, 42.5 degrees um, for more than 30 minutes has the potential to damage muscle tissue. Details about that can be found in the paper. The recommendations coming out of this study can be summarized as follows. If we have a, a realistic duration of the scan, so that would be a uh, high constant whole body is our four watts per kilogram but only for less than 30 minutes then we can say that patients with normal thermoregulation um, should be able to tolerate first level controlled operating mode however if we have patients with impaired thermoregulation they should not be scanned above the normal operating mode and patients with dysfunctional thermoregulation um, should only be scanned with whole bodies are values below one watt per kilogram and finally, if we really don't want any field enhancement from badly controlled RF shimming, then we, we should remain within the, the circular polarized mode, or that might be advisable. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can contact me if you have questions or also leave a comment here on the channel directly.